What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Will Motivation. It's early in the morning, and uh, I'm about to go over to Project Huracan, and we're gonna see what they did as far as the cement, just had the driveway poured in the basement. So let's go check it out. Yo, what's up? It's your boy Will Motivation and today we're talking about my advice on the number one way for you to get started investing in real estate. Good thing no rain. Hopefully it doesn't start raining. Yo, it's early. Sleepy. But we gotta get this stuff done, man. <laughs> I wanted to sleep in so bad. Today is Saturday. Been working hard all week, staying up late every night. But I gotta go pay these guys for getting this thing done. So I'm gonna hit the bank, then I'm gonna go pay these guys. We're gonna see what they did. All right, let's roll. All right, so stop by the bank. Grab a check for five G's, which is a second half payment. Um, the total payment for the concrete work was ten thousand. My original quote to get this done was seven thousand. With um, when my buddy was managing the project, I actually was counting on that kind of a price. But turns out it was wrong. He couldn't get that pricing and he kind of just disappeared with it. So um, he brought in another contractor to help me out. They quoted me to 7,000. I'm like, okay, let's get it done. Then, then they bring out the people to actually look at the job, and get it done. And then the quote jumped up to 10 or 11,000. And I said, you know what? I'm not, gonna, you know, I'm not gonna be going through this. So I, I went and found basically different people to do the job. The original quote that they gave me on everything to get to the drywall phase was one number. And then when they came back after getting the contractors together, they jumped the number up by about ten thousand dollars for everything. I was like, I, I just don't, I, I don't like that because to me, that's that's if you start out that way then that's probably gonna be happening the whole project. They're gonna be saying one price and then giving, giving me another price when it's time to get the work done. I'm not, and I'm not doing that. So while I'm paying the higher price now, um, I have a higher trust factor with this contract contractor. So, so anyway, concrete work cost 10 Gs. And that was to um, do the driveway, the walkway, the stairs up to the porch and the entire basement. Um, not only pouring the concrete for the basement, but also um, leveling it, putting all of the plumbing underground in the right place and all that stuff. And, um, and then yeah, filling the entire concrete for the basement. So we're going over there right now to give them the second half of the payment. So one thing to learn from this, I don't pay everything up front uh, with the contractors. I'll give them half up front or sometimes 25% up front. And then I'll make payments as the work gets done. But if it's a quick job, then I'll pay half up front and then half on completion um, if I trust them. And, um, and so this worked out real good. They, got this, they basically got this done. Um, you know, I'll pay half up front. They got the concrete, they have to pay for the, all of that. Bring out the trucks and prepare the, the space for the concrete. And then the other half is, they got the work done. So we're about to go over there and see that right now. Yeah. <laughs> we here. Alright. 
Bien, ¿cómo está? <risa> También. <risa> ¿Cómo llegó? ¿Está bien? ¿El basement también? Sí, si quiere venir. Todavía hace falta pulirlo. No es problema si lo grabo por ahí. No. Voy a poner en YouTube. <risa> ¿Cómo están? Muy bien, ¿tú? Muy bien, gracias. Jail, jail. All right, so let's check out the cement. Looks good. That's dope. So, real good job here on the cement. Um, I have this kind of set up in one of my houses, my first house that I built. And um, looks like they did a better job <laughs> than on my house. Looks real good. And uh, the driveway being concrete is better than all these asphalt driveways, so we good. These, these are dudes that did the work. They knocked it out. Muchas gracias. Buen trabajo. <laughs> Looks good. Okay. Nos vemos. Listo. A la orden. Gracias. Okay, so I'm back at the crib and um, I was checking YouTube to see how how many comments I got on my most recent video, which was actually the video I did yesterday, taking a look at Project Huracan and doing a walkthrough. If you haven't seen that video, make sure to check it out. I just posted it uh, a couple days ago and I'll actually link to it in a card up above. So just click on that link if you haven't seen that video yet, watch that video, and then watch today's video. And I'm gonna answer a um, pretty good question that I got related to how do I deal with contractors, right? All right, so starting out, what you want to do is the main thing, because I'm like when I started out, I didn't really have anybody to tell me what to do. I didn't have YouTube videos and, and stuff like that when I was first getting involved in real estate. So I just try to do things the smart way based on how I did my other business, my main business, right? And that is when you're dealing with contractors, you want to get a good price. You don't want to overpay for stuff, but you want to get stuff done correctly. And the best way that I found to do that is always get multiple bids on whatever your project is. So if you're doing, if you just got to get, um, you know, a disc disposal fixed or something like that, you might want to get several bids if you don't want to overpay for it, right? Or you might be short on time. And since it's not something that somebody can mess up that easily, you know, if they got experience, you call Roto Rooter or some company like that, you might just get it done. But if you got a big, a bigger project where you're talking about thousands of dollars, you don't want to overpay for stuff and you don't want to get screwed and pay somebody who's not going to do a good job or they're not going to complete the job. So get multiple bids. I usually get at least three bids on a project before I actually make a decision. And that's what took me so long after I got my plumbing done to pick out who I was going to get to do my electrical work on the house, who I was going to get to pour the cement, who I was going to get to do insulation, drywall, HVAC. I had, to, I had to go through some bids and get some different bids and everything and look at them, have some interaction with um, those contractors. I try to test people out. Like a lot of times I'll do my research and I'll know more or less how much something is going to cost, especially with materials. And I'll throw, I'll let, put the ball in their court and let them tell me what stuff costs. And if they're lying about it or overcharging, I won't say anything to them right then, but I just won't use them. You know, like I'll X that bid off because I can't trust them. Or if they give you one price up front and then you start getting ready to do the project, then they change the price, cancel it. Don't do it because they'll be doing that for the rest of your project. So get multiple bids. You might want to do some little tests with people to see where their head is at. Um, do your research to know what the pricing is on things, like especially with materials. Um, and that leads into the second um, recommendation I have for you. A lot of times you can do the shopping for your materials. And most of the time with my projects, I try to buy as much of the materials as possible, except for the materials that I just don't want to deal with. Like for example, there's some materials that you don't really want to deal with. So you can kind of let the contractors deal with that. And you just get their pricing and let them bid against each other. Like for example, concrete and cement and gravel and all that stuff. 
I'm not dealing with that because I can't load it on my truck and take it over there to the job site. I'll let the contractors handle that kind of thing. But like for my finishing materials, like my kitchen cabinets, my vanities, my light fixtures, my, my trim and you know, all the materials that I can buy and throw in my truck and take them over to the project. I usually will buy those materials because I can shop for them myself and then get the best quality and the best price by just shopping around, right? So if you buy your own materials, a lot of times the way contractors will try to make money off of you is they will charge you more um, for the materials than they're actually paying. Like, so if they pay, they might even get a discount a lot of times and then they'll just charge you market rates for that material. Um, or, you know, they don't get a discount, they buy something and they, they upcharge you for it. So you gotta know what the prices are on materials and, um, and if you don't, uh, look it up, you know what I'm saying? And just buy the materials yourself whenever possible. And then when it's not possible, just get multiple bids um, from different contractors and take your time. Don't be in too much of a rush, all right? So that's the second thing is um, buy your own materials or know the cost of the materials before you um, sign a contract. Okay, so when you're figuring out the, the overall price and budget for a project, I recommend that if you don't have an idea of what the price or the budget is gonna be, don't just come up with a number out of thin air and give them your budget. Um, because if it's high, then they'll accept it. They'll be like, oh, great, yeah, I'll do, I'll do the project for 3000 When what they were gonna sub submit to you in their bid might've been 1000 So if you don't know the numbers, don't give, them a, don't, don't give them a budget. Or if you have a budget, but you're not sure how much something's really gonna cost, don't give them that number because if it's too high, they'll accept it and then you wasted some money. Um, <clears throat> now, if you do know what the general budget is to get something done, um, in a lot of cases, because I have experience, I do know what the budget is. Um, and so what I'll do a lot of cases, I don't always do this, especially if it's somebody I'm, I'm dealing with for the first time, I might not do this. But if it's somebody I've been dealing with already, a lot of times I'll say, I'll tell them right up front, okay, this is how much I'm willing to pay for this. Like paint, for example, I know how much painting costs. There's, there's expensive painters and there's inexpensive painters. And I know why they're inexpensive and all of that. And I also know how to paint. So, but for me, I don't really like to paint, so I don't, I don't try to do that. But I have a number, you know what I'm saying? I know what it costs from the high end and the low end. And so a lot of times I'll go straight to my painter, my contractor and say, look, I'm trying to paint this whole house inside and out. And this is what my budget is. And, it, and it's usually gonna be a low number or maybe a fair number based on the quality of work that that particular contractor does. So if you don't know what the number is, don't give it to the contractor when you get a bid. Let them tell you the number, get several bids, right? If you do know the general budget, then you gotta make a decision on how much you're willing to pay. Um, and if, it's on, if you wanna basically, for lack of better words, lowball them or give them a tight budget and say, you know, because I do a lot of work with you, I need to get this done for this amount. Sometimes I do that and then and you save money. And then, you know, a lot of times they need to work and they'll do it or they know they like working with you so they give you a good price, all right? So I treat people fair and usually they treat me fair in return. Next, a lot of times I will tell people, tell the contractors that I know how to do the work. And that's a general statement, okay? So like when I was dealing with um, my new contractor at this new build project, I told him I knew how to get the work done or in other words, I have people that do the work, but maybe I want to work with you and give you a chance. You know what I'm saying? So I will, I go into a lot of projects. I won't tell them that I don't, I don't know how to do something or um, I don't have anybody to do it. Don't never tell them that. Like I'll tell them that I do know how to do it myself, or I have people that do it, but I'm trying to give you a shot, right? Because I want thing, you know, I want to see. I want to basically stay on top of my toes and keep my other contractors on top of their toes. Because if you can do a better job then I'll give you a shot, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, but a lot of times I do know how to do the work. I have done some of the work. So I'm no, I know how much I'm willing to pay for it so that I don't have to do it, you know what I'm saying? So a lot of times I just give that impression that I already know, but I'm giving them a shot. So you might want to incorporate that into your um, conversations with your contractors. Now, another huge point, and this is maybe the most important thing, so you don't get screwed too bad or get screwed at all, is never pay the whole job up front, especially if it's the first time that you're working with a new contractor. Don't pay the whole job up front. 
usually I like to say split it into fours or if it's a really long project, split it into parts. Like basically, um, you know, half uh, up front for a certain part, like to get the materials. And then the other half, once that particular part of the project is done. Like for example, um, with the new contractor that I have working on my house, I didn't give him all of the money up front to work on concrete, electric, HVAC, drywall. I'm not gonna do that. What I do is I break it up. So that's four different parts, right? I broke it up into at least eight, eight payments. So the first one was half of the electric to get the materials for electric. When the electric's done, I'll give him the other half and it's complete. Then I broke up the concrete into two parts. Um, half up front to get the truck out there and all of the people out there and all that stuff and the concrete. And then half once the concrete is done, which is what I just paid today. Then half for the HVAC materials and you know another quarter, you know, once the HVAC is run, and then another quarter when they do the final finishing when everything is in the house. You know what I'm saying? So you just break it up so that you don't, if somebody runs off or gets sick or anything happens, you're not out 100% of the money and then you can't complete your project. So just break it up into fair and equitable parts. Um, then the other thing that I'm gonna recommend dealing with contractors is get everything in writing up front, <clears throat> like get a proposal. So like when I first started working with this contractor, I told him there's no way I'm doing anything with you, especially being this, this is the first time we're working together without you giving me a written proposal on what you're gonna do, like for the plumbing and stuff. Cause he, got, he got, actually got the plumbing done. So I had all of the um, materials that they were gonna buy, all of the work that they were gonna do and the payment schedule in it. And we both signed off on it and it went well. You know what I'm saying? So, and a lot of times these contractors, they might be good at doing the work on your house or whatever, but they might not be good at doing the paperwork. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll do the paperwork and then they have to sign it. You know what I'm saying? So I'll say like, this is what I expect to be done. This is how much I'm gonna pay. This is when I'm gonna pay it. This is when I expect it to be done. And then we both sign off on it. And a lot of times those people that are not good with the paperwork, they will agree to that and they'll and they'll do that. And so you might have to just create up create your own contracts and have them sign them and make sure you go over it with them and understand it, you know. So a lot of people say, is it really true that most contractors will screw you over? Uh I'm I'm gonna say uh, maybe not in the short term, but in the long term. Man, most of them do like they don't. They're, most of them are not good at managing their time and not good at managing money, but they might be good at doing the work. And so a lot of times they accept too much work, and then they end up screwing people because they can't finish it all. You know what I'm saying? Or they or they mismanage the money, and you give them the money to pay for certain stuff, and they got all these different jobs going on. They got their own bills to pay, and then they mismanage your money, and then they screw you that way, where it might not have been their intention but that's what they end up doing because they're not good at the business management side of their contracting business. That's very, very typical and probably the norm for most contractors. They're good at doing the, the hands-on work, but they're not good at the business administration part of their business. And they end up screwing people because they can't manage all the work. And, it's ha and has it happened to me? Yes, a lot. Now, I haven't ha it hasn't happened to me in huge degrees because I'm real careful of how I meter out my money and how I meter out my work. I always give people like a small job to start out with and then I can increasingly give them bigger jobs if they handle the small jobs good. So with this current project, now I'm gonna tell you the story. This current project, did I get screwed? Yes, I did. Now it wasn't, what, but I don't, do I feel bad about it? Am I mad I'm about to go file a lawsuit? No, I'm not about to do that. I'm disappointed with him, but I always knew that could be a possibility with me trusting him. But I do expect him to pay me back um, by helping me complete the project later on down the road with things that I know he knows how to do um, to help me get the project done. But I'm not giving him any more money um, until I feel like we're squared up, okay? So, now the reason why I handle things like that is I usually try not to get mad about losing money. I've lost money before. Uh, people will try to sue you. People will try to do things and come after your money and stuff like that. I usually don't get upset about money stuff, you know what I'm saying? You always are gonna be spending money on something. It comes and goes, that's what it's for. Um, so I'm not upset about that. And I'm gonna tell you a story of a perfect example of how I handle stuff and how stuff comes back to you. So if I went and try to sue him, this is my this is my friend of mine, somebody I consider a friend, right? Even though I feel like he did me wrong and he disappointed me, 
Um, I'm not gonna do him wrong and badmouth him and say his name and say don't do business with him. I'm not gonna do anything like that because I wish him the best. I want him to succeed and be successful just like anybody else, I, just like anybody else that I care about who's a friend of mine, even though they might disappoint me from time to time. And likewise, like I'm, you know, nobody's perfect, you know what I'm saying? So the way I tend to handle situations like that when people do might do me wrong um, is I let them know what my expectations are. I let them know that I'm not, I don't have ill will and ill intent and I'm not gonna come after them like that, but I do expect them to do me right eventually, you know what I'm saying? Um, and sometimes you say that directly or sometimes you say it with your accent. So I'm gonna tell you a story of something that happened to me and I'm not, I'm not gonna say any names because a person might actually watch this video too. But I had a business partner um, that I did some business with back in the day on a project that we both were kind of conceptualizing. It was more my, my, my baby than it was his because I was actually building it and everything. Um, and I actually built the project. We were both working on it together. We were both coming up with ideas together. Um, we both even started marketing it together. And, um, but we split paths, right, early on, like probably months with, into the project, we split paths, right? So, um, so years later, um, I quit my job, started doing that project full time. And, um, and I kind of, because of all of the effort I put into it and the work that I put into it, um, and for lack of confusion, I didn't really say, you know, when I started a company, I had a business partner and all of that, and give him proper credit. And it might have, it, it might have rubbed him the wrong way as my company got bigger, because he knew he had a, a part to do with it um, in the beginning. But um, like I said, when we were together, we didn't make any money uh, working together. But but he but he was there, right? So later on, he came back to me and he he felt like he should be compensated. You know what I'm saying? After after I started making some money with, with all this work that I did um, and, and whatever. So I kind of looked at it, I was, a little bit, I was a little bit disappointed. I was a little bit salty to be honest. Um, but I was like, you know what, he was there. I like to treat people fair. And I'll, you know, so I'll compensate him based on um, the fact that he was there in the beginning and he did do something. Now, we would have to come to an agreement on what that something was worth, especially considering the fact that, you know, wasn't making money for years after that. So um, anyway, so what I did, instead of us going to court and fighting and stuff like that, I said, look, man, I'm going I'm to um, I'm do this. I'm going to cut you a check for some, for some money, right? It was, it was, I think, a good offer of amount of money that I was going to give him, right? All things considered. And... Um, and I was just like, you know what? I do consider the dude a friend, and I want to keep him as a friend, even though we might not see eye to eye on that. Um, I'm gonna I'm make him feel like I treated him fairly, and that's just how I'm gonna do it, right? A lot of people would have thought about it, been mad about it, couldn't be friends afterwards, and all that stuff, but I was like, that's not the way that I want to be. So, um, but let me tell you what happened afterwards. After, after that happened, um, we stayed friends, he felt like it was fair, I felt like it was fair as well, I'm not going to say I felt like I paid too much, but I mean, some people might say that or whatever, but I was just like, you know what, I'm going to be done with that so I can move forward without having to have any negative energy out there. But let me tell you what happened, um, we stayed friends, we stayed in contact, um, you know, we both have this entrepreneurial mindset, and we found a way to work together after that. Um, which kind of shows our both kind of mutual intent because I really think when he came back, he, he expressed himself well and he said kind of the reason why he wanted to come back and, and, and do that was because he felt like I was leaving him out of something that he was a part of at the beginning and I could respect that, you know what I'm saying? So, so you know, I respected that and we were good, you know what I'm saying? But when he came back later, we, we kind of built, man, um, that money, which was a, a large amount at the time, that I gave, you know, that I cut him a check for, he later came back and we had an opportunity to do something together where he got me a check for like double that, double or triple what I cut him, you know what I'm saying? And that was all on the strength of our relationship and not fighting when we had the little issue, not fighting about it, just coming to an agreement about it. And then later on, it ended up paying off, like in dollars, like we made, at least three times 
and he made some more money and I made some more money. I made more money than what I had to give him in the first place. So it was all good. And if he ever wanted to work with me again, I would work with him. We would just kind of learn to, you know, like get some stuff on contract and what we're comfortable with, but it would be cool, you know what I'm saying? So me, I learned, I don't like having a business partner because when you have a business partner, it's almost like you work for somebody else because if they decide to take a vacation or chill and you're still trying to work hard and get something to the next level and you got that partner, then you could end up being working for them, you know what I'm saying? Because they might not want to put in the work and then you might, or whatever, they might want to go in a different direction or you want to go this direction, but y'all got this business and it's like a breaking up or divorcing in a marriage or something. And I, and I, I'd rather just have my own my business, any other business that I'm gonna start, and then bring in people as partners where they can make a percentage of whatever we do together, like a fair percentage, you know what I'm saying? So anyway, that's the lesson. Um, yes, I have been burned by contractors, but I try to, I put the, I put the onus on myself to be responsible with my money and be prepared for the worst thing that could happen. And then when stuff happens, try to treat people with respect and expect them to treat you re with respect and then uh, move forward. And if they did you wrong, make sure, like you might want to touch them up and say, hey, it's time for you to, like I'm, I still want to be good with you. So now you need to make good on where you did me wrong. Because a lot of times people, these contractors, they don't mean to do it. They're just not good at managing their business and stuff. Or they, or they have their own problems and stuff and their own personal life get away of them doing a good job and that might mess things up. So I give them an opportunity to make right on whenever they might have done me wrong. And there's, I could think of a few little situations where I had that happen, and um, but they weren't major because I managed them so that they wouldn't be major, you know what I'm saying? So that's the same thing I'm doing on the Project Hurricane and I hope this advice helped you guys in some way. Um, first person to comment on this video, if you don't have a free t-shirt already, then I will send you a Will Motivation t-shirt. Just send me an email at get at willmotivation.com. But you gotta be the first person to comment that has not yet received a free t-shirt. Now, if you come to the video later and you're like, man, this video's been up for a while, I want a free t-shirt, just post a comment with the question and if I really like that question, I'll do a video about it and then I'll give you a free t-shirt, all right? So if you got questions about real estate or entrepreneurship, about the Lambo, about the Hellcat or whatever, just ask it. If I like the question, I'll do a video about it, send you a free t-shirt. This is Will Motivation. Please click that like button for me and subscribe if you haven't and I'll see you guys in the next video. Holla. Hey, I just wanted to say thanks for watching today's video. There's a lot more to come. Hit that like button for me and subscribe to my channel. A lot of you guys have been asking me about when is my online course going to be ready? Well, I have good news for you. My online course is completed. Um, I'll put a link in the description of this video where you can click on that link and get a 40% discount off the course. That'll be for the first 50 students. So if you're ready to take the online course that I've basically laid out everything that I know about how to invest in real estate, click the link below or just go to www.willmotivation.com slash invest. And I thank you guys for taking the time out to watch today's video. Hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.